Amen. Let the heart say amen. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Truly, we thank God today for our being here. We thank him for his faithfulness. When I say I thank God for his faithfulness, I mean I thank God for being faithful towards me, uh, even when I was not faithful toward him. Truly, indeed, we count it a blessing to be in the Lord's service on the Lord's day, and we are on the Lord's time. And we are just excited about what God is doing in our lives. I'm excited what God is going to do. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. <laughs> Amen. And I just want to say to all of you this morning, we thank God for you. I thank God for your prayers. Thank God for your prayers. And I know the Spratt family especially thank God for your prayers. And I thank God for what you all did on yesterday to the uh, culinary committee. Amen, you all did a wonderful job. We thank you all for the food you brought. Miss Ghost and them greens was off the chain. <laughs> they were off the chain. And I'm just, I just wanna thank you all for how you all come together and do uh, what needs to be done. Amen, and we know Sister Mamie is going to be missed. Uh, she is definitely going to be missed. She was a jewel. And, and we just got to continue to pray for her family, for Jordan especially. And God will continue to, to, to take care of him. Amen? Amen. We thank God again uh, for the uh, Reverend Connors. He did a wonderful job this morning with that Sunday school lesson, uh, as he always does, as he always does. And we just thank you all for tuning in to be a part of that. Amen. They're going to ask everyone to stand. I'm going to do a congregation song, and then I'm going to turn it over to them this morning. Amen. The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. Y'all can clap them. The Lord is blessing me right now, oh, right now. You know he woke me up this morning, started me on my way. Yeah. The Lord is blessing me right now. Let's say it again. You know the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. You know the Lord is blessing me right now, oh, right now. You know he woke me up. <clears throat> so glad he started me on my way. Yeah. The Lord, he blessing me right now. Listen to him. He woke me up this morning. I will close in my right mind. He didn't let me Sleep too late. Oh, he woke me right on time. You know he woke me up. So glad he started, started me on my way. Yeah. The Lord, he blessing me. Right now, I want to say that verse one more time, y'all. Listen to him. He woke me up this morning. I was closed in my right mind. 
He didn't let me sleep too late. Oh, he woke me, woke me, woke me right on time. You know, he woke me up. So glad he started looking me on my way. Yeah. Oh, the Lord, he blessing me. You know the Lord, he blessing me. You know the Lord, he blessing me right now. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Truly the Lord is blessing us. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask Reverend Connors to come at this time and give us a prayer, and then I will turn it over to the praise team. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Truly, indeed, God is good. Just giving him praise and thanks for his mercy and grace and allowing us to be here to see another day. Amen. Actually, I want to stand for our scripture reading this morning. Our scripture reading will be coming from Psalms chapter 91. Psalms 91, verses 1 and 2. And the scripture reads, He that, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. I read unto you Psalms 91, verses 1 and 2. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we stand before you this morning. Father God, we just give you thanks and praise, O Heavenly Father, for your mercy and for your grace. Father God, we thank you and praise you, O Lord, for allowing us to wake to see another day. And Father God, as we have gathered here this day, O Heavenly Father, we just want to lift up our hands and voices and give you all the praise and the glory, Father, that is due only unto you. Father God, we pray, O Heavenly Father, for forgiveness of our sins upon this day. Heavenly Father, we pray that you continue to lead God and direct us, O Lord, throughout this day, Father, that our action, God, our character, and our behavior, O Heavenly Father, will be in line with your word. And God, we will represent you, O Heavenly Father, as we should. Father God, we pray for those that are here. Father, we pray for the bereaved family upon this week. God, we pray for the Spratt family, O Heavenly Father, and the loss of Sister Mamie. And Father God, we ask, O God, you continually comfort that family, O Heavenly Father. Continually just be with them, O God. And Father God, we pray for all those that are not saved upon this day. Father God, those that do not claim you as your Lord and personal Savior, Father, we ask that you give them a chance, O Heavenly Father, to come to know you and to be in a right relationship with you. God, we pray for our community, pray for our nation. But most importantly, Father, we pray for our spiritual leaders. God, we pray for our pastor. Pray for all the ministers here in this community. God, that they will preach your word, O Heavenly Father, and edify your name. God, that lives will be touched and souls will be saved. Father, God, we continue to pray that you be with us. Lead God and direct us, God, in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Come on and tell God thank you this morning. Come on and tell God thank you. Amen. Listen, you can't be chasing after him and be quiet. Amen. You cannot be chasing after him and be quiet. You got to make some noise. Amen. If you chase it after the Lord. Truly, we thank God again this morning for uh, them getting us, amen, fired up this morning. Amen. We thank God for that this morning. This morning, I want to look in the book of Habakkuk. The book of Habakkuk. That is an Old Testament correspondence uh, this morning. And I know that all of us lately, amen, this has been some, some rough times. Amen. But I want to just encourage somebody this morning in, in the midst of everything that's going on. Amen. I just want to let you know that God will. He will take care of you. Amen. Amen. That, that's an encouraging word for somebody this morning. That's on the perimeter of giving up. That the Lord will take care of you. This morning we're going to look at Habakkuk and we will look at all three chapters, amen, to, to bring this uh, message together. And I know I'm usually a, a one chapter guy, but this morning I need to look at three chapters for one message, amen. I will be reading Habakkuk chapter 1. I'll be reading verses 1 through 4. And then we will go to chapter 2. And I'll read 1 through 3 in verse 20. And then I will go to chapter 3. And I will read verses 17 through 18. Amen. When you arrive at Habakkuk chapter 1, one, you will find these words when you, when you finally get there, you will see these words. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wouldst say, Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that rise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment does not forever, never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong, judgment proceeded. Chapter 2 says, I will stand upon my watch and set upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered and said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Also in that same chapter, verse 20 says, But the Lord is in his holy temple, and all the earth keeps silence before him. Chapter 3, verse 17 said, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. You may be seated. In chapter 1, Habakkuk asked God a question. 
He said, Lord, I need to ask you something. And I want to say this morning, God don't mind you asking him questions. He said, Lord, how, how long should I cry and you not hear me? Then in chapter 2, God answers him and said, okay, write the vision, make it plain. Then in chapter 3, he says that the fig tree is not blossoming. There ain't no fruit on the vines. But at the end of verse number 18, he makes a very prophetic proclamation. He says, in spite of what's going around me, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I want to talk this morning to encourage somebody that's sitting here this morning and tell you that things will work out. Y'all better hear that this morning. Things will work out. In other words, I, I know where you're at right now. I know your disposition does not look uh, very, very, very joyful to you. But I just want to encourage you this morning that in the midst of everything that you have going on in your life right now, that things will work out. The book of Habakkuk is what theologians call a fascinating book. Because this book is filled with fear, Futility, and this book is filled with faith. Because when you read this book, not only is the minor prophet dealing with a major problem, but Habakkuk is a unique book because it is one of the few books of the Bible that starts off by complaining. Somebody say complaining. And I just want to say this morning that in a real sense, God welcomes your complaints. Because notice here this morning that the book does not begin by dealing with the generous and gracious grace of God. The book does not open up by celebrating the majestic and magnificent name of the master. The book does not open up by celebrating the source of sustenance of our shepherd. But when you read the book of Habakkuk, when you read chapter 1, when you read verse 1 and 2, you will discover that the book starts off by complaining. And the text is tailored to teach us this morning that God wants you to take your complaints to him. Preach well, may bring because he knows that in time, if you bring your complaints to him, he will turn them into compliments about him. And this story this morning, it helps us to embrace the fact that as a child of God, in spite of what we are going through, in spite of what we are dealing with, in spite of what it looks like we may be facing in days to come, things will work out. Matter of fact, the name Habakkuk means to embrace. And, and, and I just want to encourage somebody and say to them this morning, that's what you need to do. When your life hits a slippery spot in life, you need to learn how to embrace it. And you need to make sure that you embrace the things that you know about God. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Oh, 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 okay, okay, here it is right here, here it is. You got to embrace the things you know about God because unless the God above you gets in you, then the circumstance of life around you will consume you. Are y'all hearing me here? And Habakkuk learns that we need to learn to embrace the eternal things 
hug the Holy One, caress Christ when things don't go according to your perceived plan. Because I come to tell you this morning that no matter how well you plan it, no matter how well you think it out, no matter how many people you get involved in it, sometimes things do not go according to your plans. Do I have any witnesses in here? None of us put in our plans last year a pandemic. Are y'all hearing me here? None of us had on our itinerary a pandemic. None of us had on our agenda that we would be walking around this time of the year with masks on. But in spite of the pandemic, in spite of what we are doing right now, things will work out. Because when you look at the back of each chapter not only constitutes the content, but it also eliminates, illuminates the context of our lives. What do you mean, preacher? Each page in the book of Habakkuk explains the process of our lives while we pilgrimage through this planet. Can I give you an overview? So, so you can see how you can overcome the stress and dilemma and despondency that you're facing. In chapter one, it deals with being tested. In chapter two, it deals with trust. In chapter two, it deals with being taught. And in chapter three, it deals with trust. In chapter one, it deals with wavering. In chapter two, it deals with writing. But when you get to chapter three, it talks about worshiping. In chapter one, it talks about a problem. In chapter two, it talks about a fresh perspective. But in chapter three, it talks about promotion. In chapter one, it talks about sobbing. In chapter two, it talks about scripting. In chapter 3, it talks about singing. In chapter 1, we see he's having a burden. In chapter 2, God turns around and gives him a vision. But in chapter 3, we see that after the burden and the vision, he turns around and starts praising. So I'm saying to somebody here this morning that you might be sitting in chapter 1. Preach, Reverend Mabry. You might find yourself sitting in chapter 2. But I come to tell somebody that if you hold on in chapter 1, if you keep holding on in chapter 2, sooner or later, chapter 3, is going to come knocking on your door. Are y'all going to help me here? And then in chapter 3, you'll learn how to trust God. In chapter 3, you'll learn how to worship God. In chapter 3, you'll learn how to shout for God. In chapter 3, you'll thank God for your promotion. In chapter 3, you'll learn how to sing. In chapter 3, you'll learn how to praise. But in spite of everything, why are you sitting in chapter 1? Why are you sitting in chapter 2? You got to tell yourself that, baby, if I hold on just a little while longer, that things will work out. Things gonna work out. Well, how do you know things gonna work out? Well, things will work out, first of all, when I get rid of my defeated dialogue. I gotta get rid of my defeated dialogue. That's in chapter one. The entire tension within this text focuses on the prophet who wanted to know when is God going to do something, but only, but not only that, why you ain't saying that? We can shout right there. Because you know what? That's what we parked at right now in life. You, you ain't got to say amen, I say amen for you. That's what we are parked at right now in life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have a virus that we cannot see. That's killing folk every day. Yeah. Attacked the old last year and now it's attacking the young. Yeah. Am I preaching in here? Yeah. And I don't know about you, but every now and then I pray and I say, God, when you going to do something? Yeah. You ain't got to say it. I said for you. Yeah. When are you going to say something? Yeah. And Habakkuk is upset, y'all, because everything that he kind of has came to believe about the God above him is now being contradicted by the pressures and the thing going on around him. And sometimes the things that are going on around you will cause you to have doubt about the God above you. Y'all yes, yes, ain't got to say amen. You ain't got to say amen. Listen, you can sit here and act like I'm speaking in Spanish if you want to. 
But there are some of us in this room this morning whose convictions have been challenged during this pandemic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because when folk die, you wonder why that person, Lord. Yeah. Come on and help me here now. Yeah. And sometimes our convictions are challenged because the circumstances around us is out of control. And it makes us believe that even though the circumstances around us are out of control, what is the God above us doing? Come on, help me here. So the prophet wanted to know, God, when you going when you gonna do something? But not only that, why you won't say nothing? Y'all ain't get listen, y'all, y'all ain't gotta get scared. Habakkuk, that's what Habakkuk did, y'all. I know, listen, that's what Habakkuk did. So, so what happened in this text here. Is doing this dialogue, Reverend Connors. Habakkuk sounds more defeated rather than delivered. Okay, okay, okay. I'm the only one been there, so I'm gonna preach to myself. Habakkuk, to God, why, why you won't say nothing? God, I just sit here and I didn't hit the speed button on my prayers, but it looked like you didn't place my blessings on hold. Preach, Pastor. God, I didn't email you, but evidently the email I sent you went into your spam folder. Come on, help me here. God, I didn't send you a text message, and I'm sitting here, and you have not yet replied. Why won't you do something? And, but more than that, why don't you just say something? But can I help by five of y'all here? Because God seems wordless does not mean that he's worthless. Even though God may be sitting quiet, it does not mean that God has quit. Y'all better help me here. Even though it seems like God has become silent, it does not mean that he's sitting still. Even though it seems like you're not being heard, it does not mean that God did not hear you. Because I need to tell her back again. I need to tell somebody that's sitting here this morning that God is always doing something. Somebody say, he's always doing something. And even though it may not feel like it, he may not be saying nothing, but he's always doing something. I remember hearing a story about her and the wife that went to New York City to see the color purple on Broadway. He said after the first act, it went dark without warning. No color, no lighting, it was just dark. But even though nobody on stage was saying anything, you could still see things moving around on the stage. The props were changing. The scenery was changing. The colors were changing. And that's all I'm trying to tell somebody here this morning. You may not hear God performing on stage. Preach real maybe. You may not see God doing anything on stage. But I come to tell somebody that he's working behind the scenes. Are y'all going to help me here? He's changing the props in your life. He's changing the scenery in your life. And God is trying to tell some of y'all, I know things didn't go well for you in act number one. But if you hold on in act number two, you're going to learn that God is getting you ready for chapter two. Preach well, mate, well. So I got to learn how to get rid of my defeated dialogue. But secondly, things will work out in my life when I devise a divine direction for my life. You got to have a divine direction. Because after you go through your season of complaining, after you go through your season of complaining, after you go through your season of complaining, God tells Habakkuk in chapter number two, sit down somewhere and do some writing. Come on, help me. I'm in the book. I'm in chapter two now. He listened to his complaint in chapter one. Now he said, okay, sit down. Do some writing. In other words, do some vision casting. Now here, here are my prophetic statements. This is a real prophetic statement because it's in the book. Some prophetic stuff they do ain't in the book, but this is in the book. Don't forget 
this going to be a good little, some of y'all put on Snapchat, Facebook. Listen to this. Don't forget about what God has shown you regardless of what life is showing you. Pull it again, Pastor. Do not forget what God has shown you regardless of what life is showing you. Because if what you are seeing right now is not what God revealed to you, then what you see has got to be temporary. Y'all miss it. Shout right there. If God has shown you something and where you are sitting at right now is not what God has shown you, Come on and help me here. You got to understand that where you are sitting at right now in life is not a permanent place, but it is a temporary place. (laughs) Listen, it's what you're feeling now and not what you felt when God showed you. The feeling you got now got to be temporary. Somebody say, this got to be temporary. And see, here's what messes us up. Sometimes God allows everything to happen at the same time. Somebody say same time. And sometimes I have discovered that the same time can turn into a rough time in your life. Okay, let me, I'm in this book. Notice what happened to her back. The fig trees fail to produce at the same time. The olive trees didn't bring forth no olives at the same time. It was harvest time, and seemingly no harvest was going to be coming in at the same time. Sheep did not begat sheep. Cow did not bring forth new calves. And when everything happens at the same time, it can be a rough time in your life. So the question comes to mind is, how will you deal with it? When your prosperity turns into poverty. How you deal with it? When your good times have now turned to hard times. How you deal with it when your aspirations have turned into adversities? How you deal with it when your blessings have now begun to feel like burdens? How, how do you deal with with ministry? How do you deal with church when seemingly your hopes have been dashed and your dreams have been deferred? Well, I just told y'all what to do. Sit down somewhere and write your vision. Y'all better hear this here. Sit down somewhere and write your vision. Sit yourself down because it what God has showed you it's not where you are right now. It's temporary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let's look at the text. The man of God, in chapter 1, he complained. And what God is doing in chapter 2, he's answering the man's complaint. And God's reply to Habakkuk is, do some writing. Because in verse 2 he said, and the Lord answered me, write the vision, Make it plain that he may run that reason. In other words, Habakkuk, I don't want you writing it on a notepad. But I want you to write it and make it big enough like it's on a billboard. Because your vision, your revelation, your unveiled covering means more than read it on the run. Because that's what most of us do. We read the Bible on the run. We raise our families on the run. We handle our business, uh uh-uh, on the run. But when God gives you a vision, when God tells you what he wants you to do, it ought to be big enough, not so you can run to whatever, but rather so you can run through whatever. It's going to work out. Because watch it, here it is, I'm almost through. Things will work out in your life and my life when I become dedicated and determined to see it through. That's the kicker right there. That's the kicker right there. That's what's defeating a whole lot of us. 
we got this defeated dialogue. We don't have no kind of direction. Then when God tells us what to do, because he don't give us every detail, because he does not give us an itinerary, we are not dedicated and determined to see it through. You've got to be patient. We're not dedicated. As soon as we hit one bump in the road, we quit. As soon as somebody don't agree with us, we quit. Come on and help me here. Huh? But listen, can I help some of y'all? I'm going to help, help somebody because somebody's sitting on the perimeter giving up. What I believe about God must be greater than what I believe about my situation. Y'all missed that. What I believe about God has to be greater than what I believe about my situation. In other words, wherever I am parked at right now in life, it is not greater than the God I serve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm almost through. Two things in this text trouble Habakkuk in chapter 3. There were two things that troubled him. Two things bothered Habakkuk. Two things bothered him. Fig trees messed him up. Sheep and cattle messed him up. They bothered him. Well, why did they bother him, Pastor? Well, Fig trees, grapes, and olives uh, 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 are symbolical of annual income. And sheep and cattle are symbolical of adequate resources. So Habakkuk says that my income is messed up and my resources ain't looking much better. Are y'all hearing me here? Woo! Now God, you just told me in chapter 2 to write the vision and make it plain. And I complained to you in chapter 1. You told me to write in chapter 2, but now look what I'm facing in chapter 3. <laughs> and it's all because I'm doing what you told me to do. Watch the text. Watch the text. Watch the text. Because some of you here right now, you have been halted in life. You have been hindered in life because of poor annual income and inadequate resources. Okay, let's hear, let's hear what Habakkuk decides to do. Let's, let's, let's hear. Let's, I, whoo, let's hear what Habakkuk decides to do. Are y'all ready? He complains in chapter 1. Chapter 2. Okay, God, sit down, write the vision, make the plan. I wrote the vision. Chapter 3, let's see what he decided to do. Let's, let's, let's hear. Habakkuk decided to do what theologians call a six-fold consecration. Watch the text. It's all in the scripture. He says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, no fruit going to be on the vine. The field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut from the fold, and there shall be no herds in the stall yet. That's fine. I mean, I'm, I gotta go through this again. It ain't in my manuscript like that. Did you come off the Holy Ghost email? No figs on the blossom, somebody say one. No fruit on the vine, somebody say two. No fields yield to yield me, somebody say three. No flock, somebody say four. No hurry, somebody say five. Here's number six. Yet I will rejoice. <laughs> now, for those who didn't know, that was your shout. <laughs> you got to learn when to shout. He says, in spite of everything that I don't have, Yet, I will still rejoice in the Lord. And all I'm saying this morning as I get ready to close is saying, you have got to learn how to have a yet praise. In other words, it had not happened yet. But even though it had not happened yet, I'm still going to praise God. You got to trust him. Habakkuk said, I had a rough chapter one. Habakkuk said, I had a promising 
chapter 2. But then he says that I enter into chapter 3. It does not go the way I thought it would go. But Habakkuk said, I'm going to praise God. And I talked to Habakkuk. I said, Habakkuk, it looks pretty bad for you. Habakkuk said, maybe what you don't understand is that I just believe now that if God had done it before, that God is able to to do it again. So Habakkuk said that my praise eh, is not predicated upon anything that I see. But Habakkuk said that my praise is predicated upon the God that I know. And notice here now that Habakkuk does not praise God because of what had happened. He does not praise God for what has happened. But Habakkuk said, I'm going to praise God in spite of what has happened. And some of you here only praise God because of what had happened. And some of you praise God for what has happened. But can anybody here give God some praise in spite of what's going on in your life? Because I discover that when you praise God, that God has a way of turning things around. He can turn your problems into praise. He can turn your complaints into confidence. He can turn your trembling turn into triumphs. If you learn how to praise him in spite of what's going on. And I wonder this morning if there anybody here they got to praise in the midst of this pandemic. I know your blood pressure may be high. And I know your self-esteem may be low. But I made up in my mind that in spite of what's going on, that I'm still going to bless his name. Do you hear what I'm saying? And because I've had some fig tree to try up in my life. And I had some olive trees that did not yield anything. But I got a testimony and my testimony is that out of all the things that I've been through in life, I still gotta pray. Do you hear what I'm saying? And well, somebody said, well, well, tell me, Pastor Mabry, uh, how do you have a praise? Uh, because in spite of um, the, uh, what has happened in my life, uh, I thank God for what did, did not happen. Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, I say in spite of everything uh, that has happened in my life, uh, I can still thank God uh, for what not happened. Uh, do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, because I remember um, uh, when I was young, uh, the old church used to say uh, that I could have been damned uh, sleeping in my grave. You hear what I'm saying? And that sounds pretty good. But now that I'm so much older, that same saying has meaning in my life. Because I could have been dead and sleeping in my grave. But I'm so glad that the God I serve, He always is looking out for me. Can I get a witness in there? Because now I got to give God some praise. Because God has been good to me. Do you hear what I'm saying? I got to give God some praise. Because God has been good to me. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because when I turn on the news and I see that it was 600,000, have time. 
from COVID-19. And just as past Christmas, I couldn't play Santa Claus because I was sitting in my house with COVID-19. Do you hear what I'm saying? And the same thing, they kill somebody else. The same thing, they had other folks at the graveyard. The same thing, that kill somebody. The Lord spared me. Do you hear what I'm saying? It is not the call. I've been so good. It is not the call. I've done everything that the man told me to do. But it's because of his rain and the call of his mercy. Because somebody is better at preaching than I am. But God called them home. Somebody is better at giving God praise than you are. But God called them home. Somebody is better at pain than you are. But God called them home. And you mean to tell me you can sit up in this room and act like you can't give God just a little of your praise. I come to tell somebody that if the Lord never does another thing in me He's already, I said he's already, I said he's already, he's already done enough. So I had to learn how to give God some food. And if I had a house in here, I would tell somebody to look at your neighbor. He said, neighbor, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to give God some praise. In spite of my circumstances, I got to give God praise. In spite of my problem, I got to give God some praise. In spite of what the doctor said, I got to give God some praise. In spite of what other folks say, I got to give God some praise. If somebody said, can you tell me, Pastor, why do you give God a praise? Because of, because of his mercy, I got to give him praise. Because of, because of his grace, I got to give him praise. Because he's my company keeper, he's my windshield wiper. So I want to turn tears from your eyes. Is there anybody here that love my Jesus? Is there anybody here that love the Lord? You ought to tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Things will. Things will. Things will work out. go-to verse. All things work for good. Do y'all see this? It's going to work out. It may not work out the way you thought it was. He may not have thought of the plan you thought he should, but things are going to work out. I listen. 
try to help somebody. Get rid of your defeated dialogue. Get that negativity out of your dialogue. Quit saying I can't. And start focusing on I can't. But can I can do what? All things. Not through my degree, not through my education, not through my last name. All things through who? Get rid of that defeated dialogue. The problem is many times we got to work. And I remember playing ball. They used to tell us, you don't want, you got to put in the work. You got to put in the work. You don't show up and just perform on game night. You got to put the work in. I don't just get up and preach on Sunday morning. I got to put the work in. Get rid of your defeated dialogue. Then you got to devise divine direction for your life. Notice I said divine. That means it's a God-inspired direction. Many people are trying to go places that God have not designed for you to go. That's why you're having trouble getting there. It could be that's not the path, but he, has the, he said, write the vision. What vision am I writing, God? The one you gave me. A lot of us are doing stuff what folk told us to do. Mm-hmm. But you got to have divine direction. And if you don't get anything here, don't forget about what God has shown you in spite of what life is showing you. Because if what God revealed to you is not what you're seeing right now, you're in a temporary place. Because you got to say, look, now look, God, this ain't what you showed me. This ain't what you showed me, God. So, so, and see, some of you looking now because you know that where you are right now is not what God showed you. It's not what God put in your spirit. And let me tell you something. I don't want you to get comfortable. I want you to be uncomfortable. If you are in a place in life right now where God does not want you and has not intended you to be and has not shown you, I want you to feel miserable right now. Because I want you to feel miserable enough to get up off your do nothing and do something about getting where God wants you to be. I don't want you to be happy where you are if it's not what God wants you to be. That's why you don't find no joy in it. That's why you don't find no peace in it. Because it's not what God wants you to be. I know y'all say, Pastor, you talking mean to us. Yes, I am, because I want you to be the best of you that God wants you to be. And then you got to be dedicated and determined to see it through. I'm going to tell you like my grandma used to tell me, ain't nobody going to give you nothing in life. Even if God had shown it to you, you still got to go do it. Y'all don't believe me. Let me put you on Bible ground before I close out. The Bible said that faith without works is dead. But God didn't show me this. But you sitting up every day. Won't go to work. Young folks won't go to class. They ain't taking the best of advantage that and staring you in your face. But you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to be this, you want to be that. Well, get up and go for it. If God has shown it to you, you got to go put forth some effort. Hmm. Things will work out. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. If you're here, don't know Jesus, I invite you to come. Sometimes, you know, growing up, some of the things we used to hear our grandparents say, they, they sounded real good, but they weren't biblical. You know, they used to tell us, you don't question God. It's okay to question God. Because if you got a problem about God, you don't need to ask Pastor Maybe, you need to ask God. <laughs> He don't, he don't mind your complaints. 
Because go back and read these three chapters. Please go back and read them today. You will see that Habakkuk starts out by complaining. Paul says, I'm a servant. James says, I'm a servant. But Habakkuk says, hey, Lord, I got a problem with you. Now, you ain't listening to me. You ain't doing that. That we tell God. God says, okay, sit down, write the vision, make it plain. Then God starts bringing these things to pass. And Habakkuk gets up one morning, ain't no figs on the trees. Ain't no leaves on the book, on the olive trees. Ain't no more cows, no sheep. But he said, you know what? I ain't gonna complain no more. He said, I'm just gonna rejoice. <laughs> I'm just gonna rejoice. Boy, I'm about to jump out of I'm just gonna rejoice. And I'm trying to say to us this morning, let us learn how to rejoice in spite of. Let us stand. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. We want to also continue to practice social distancing. Y'all see, we got, I don't know, listen, I know we're a Baptist church, but y'all don't need to be scared in the front row. <laughs> y'all ain't got to be scared to come on up a little bit. I ain't, ain't going to put y'all on this morning bench up here. <laughs> Amen. But we do want to continue to practice social distancing as well. Okay, for families to sit together. But we got a couple of more up here. Y'all could have came. And uh, so. Let's try to, in the future, reference for that. Let's make sure we continue to spread out. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for this word on today. We thank you, God, because this is a right now word. And God, I just thank you for allowing me to be your vessel, to be the carrier of this word. And now, God, I pray now, God, that you have given us this word, that this word now, God, will take part in our life. And God will help us and lead us and guide us and give us direction in days to come. God, I pray now for that person in this place that's sitting in a temporary place that you not intend for them to be. I pray, God, that now they are uncomfortable and, God, they will continue to move forward what it is you have shown them. God, we know today without a shadow of a doubt that things will work out. And, God, even though we don't see your finger, even though we don't see a trace of you, God, we know that you're working behind the scenes. God, we pray now for the Spratt family. We pray, God, for the Howell family. And God, we pray that you just continue to shower down your blessings upon us. And God, I pray that you continue to comfort and console them, God, during this season. God, we pray for healthcare workers, God. We pray for nurses and doctors. God, we pray also, God, for funeral homes now, God, that are having to deal, God, look like we're overwhelming people dying. I pray, God, that you continue to protect them too, God, that they are now, God, trying to be service to others. And now, God, if we depart from this place, but never your presence, we ask you to keep us in your care. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you all for coming and worshiping with us. Thank you for watching us by Facebook Live. Amen. You can go to Givelify on our app, and you can give, 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 give. God bless you.